Jamo, thank you very much. Uh, listen, I get it. We're watching the live pitches. You see the mixed emotions. It's not the way that you wanted it to be, right? But overwhelmingly, this should still be a celebratory moment, Charlie. Yeah, we're going to the World Cup. I, I know this was going to be a difficult game considering it was just don't lose by six. And a lot of these guys were coming into it thinking, oh, we can create history. But it, it still felt weird. You, 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 in the first 45 minutes, there wasn't that energy that we saw from them in the, in the game against Mexico and certainly again at home against Panama. This is a, something we need to celebrate. We're going back to the World Cup. This is you know, something that we really felt the, the effects of not qualifying in 2018. Now we have a whole generation of kids who are going to get to see a World Cup. We're going to get to be a part of it, watching this U.S. men's national team play. And I think the experience that comes with that is only going to make this team better. Was tonight's performance disappointing? Yes. But I, I think there are a lot of positives to take out of it. All right, let's very quickly take you straight over to Costa Rica, where Jenny Chu is with Christian Pulisic. Christian, a bit of a frustrating result today. How did you see it play out? Yeah, definitely frustrating. I hate to lose. Um, it's a good atmosphere in the stadium. We lost concentration twice on set pieces, and uh, that's how it goes. But obviously, we're so proud that we're, we're going to the World Cup. Despite that, we have all seen the images of you four years ago not qualifying. You are now going to a World Cup. What are those emotions? Uh, I'm extremely proud. I'm extremely proud of this group. Um, it's a bit of a weird feeling right now because I hate to lose so much. But uh, I'm, I'm really proud, and uh, I can't wait to go to the World Cup. I feel like this frustration can be a little bit temporary, but when you shake this off, when you talk about the entire qualifying cycle and this team and what they've been through, what has it been like? It's definitely been a roller coaster. Um, it's never easy to come down and play in these in these CONCACAF countries. We know that. And uh, we battled through most of it. And uh, at the end of the day, we're in the top three and we're going to the World Cup. So we should be proud. What do the next eight months look like for you guys? Preparation, um, just continuing to, to do it well at club level. And uh, yeah, get back together, get as much training in as we can, and uh, get ready for, for the big event. Congratulations, Christian. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jenny. Uh, listen, we the truth is it, it would have been wonderful to qualify for the World Cup on the back of a big result like the win against Panama. You would automatically have had that whole boost of emotion and, and outpouring of joy that, that you want to see when a country qualifies for the World Cup, especially a country with the context of America and the failed attempt to qualify for 2018. But ultimately, the bottom line is qualifying or not for the World Cup is the only lens through which this whole window will be seen. Right, Charlie? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's the positives throughout the whole cycle. There, there were a lot of players who I think grew gradually throughout the process and, and players that have cemented themselves in a position like Anthony Robinson. I don't think a lot of too many players were kind of set in stone in the position. Tyler Adams, we know he's got to be there. Weston McKinney, who we're missing. We're missing Serginho Des, who I, I think I would have loved to see in this final Aronson. window. Aronson, who I, I think could play a, a big role with this team. So there are a number of players who I think can, can be a positive uh, figure within within the group. For me, we're going to the World Cup. It's, it's weird, right? That's all uh, right here. Let's go. We're, we're, we're going back we're going to the World Cup. This is wonderful. But that was Christian, such a half-hearted attempt at holding come up your on, scars. Come on, bro. That's the thing. Bro. That's the thing. Look, look. You, you saw it in Christian. It's like a cloud over the situation. Nobody sweet, likes right? to lose or advance in these circumstances. But if you rewind four years ago and remember. Obviously, you. Why you got to bring that up, I'm just, bro, man? Why you gotta... I wasn't there. But yeah, if you take four years sure. ago, and from that game against Trinidad, our number one priority was to qualify for the next World Cup. Let, let's be they honest. They completed though. that objective. Now they got to look forward. This game was always going to be hard because it's been hard for every other national U.S. national team going to Costa Rica. So it wasn't going to be a downhill slide. It was always going to be an uphill battle. And you know, Costa Rica did well. I mean, they, they played with their B squad, but they did well to make the most out of the chances that they had. Let's, Let's be, honest. be honest about they, what? They, 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 they celebrated against Panama. Oh, no. oh.
Oh, thank you, sir. Even Ultimately, we're going. We're, up there. we're going back. They we're celebrated back. like they won the World Cup after Canada. Who are these ladies guys? First, ladies first. Ladies first. Ladies first. Okay. Ladies first. Okay. Who are oh. they? They even ladies brought the band, first. right? On accident. Yes. They, they, they celebrated after Panama. I don't Panama. Drink, but thank you. That was the celebration. Who wants to know champagne for big people? Even though they had You can have mine, mate. You can have mine. You're right. They did. They had that moment there. Clint, I know you don't want to talk about it, but you are the only one who lived that experience, right? For sure. Put, your, put sure. yourself in the shoes of these players now, knowing that they do get to go, knowing nah. that they get to start a new era of football for the United <laughs> oh, States. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. I'm, it's, a, it's a dream come true. As a kid, it's what you dreamed about, playing in World Cups, represent your country, and now they have an opportunity to do it. Christian missed out on the last time. He knows what, what that felt like. Obviously, we didn't get the result that we wanted today, but – we're going to the big show, and there's an opportunity to do something great. And for these young players that haven't had a lot of experience in, in uh, CONCACAF World Cup qualifying, they got the job done. Now they'll have the experience of being in the World Cup, and hopefully they do great. But even if you look even further forward to the next World Cup in 2026, mm -hmm. eyeing with the possibility of doing something great. I mean, not to say that we still don't try to go as far as we can in this next one, and they can't do, you know, go the furthest that we've ever been. But you're never going to have a better opportunity – Opportunity to win a World Cup than in 2026 on a home soil. We're going back uh, to the World Cup. Can we just have a moment of appreciation for the British butler? <laughs> <laughs> but Kay, Kay, and, I, and I hear uh, Master I, I definitely I agree with everything that you guys have said. Of course, there's going to be a deflating moment because no one wants to lose. We all are passionate. We love this game, and we're all competitive. And so hearing what Christian said after the game, it's spot on. You're going to have mixed emotion because you want to win. But we're going back to the World Cup. We're going back. To Why does your world. energy not match Mo's? We're going back. Look. Listen, listen. We're all excited. Look, like I said, everybody's our different, right? Our, our objective we're, from four years ago was to qualify. We qualified. This is great. But to speak on, I mean, I just can't fake feeling how I feel. Look, this is going to be and, their and first. It's a young okay. squad. This is going to be their first opportunity. This is their first qualifying. This is going to be their first World Cup for a lot of them. And this is going to be great experience, like you said, for four years down the line in 2026. I'm looking for them to put on a good performance come this fall, and I'm looking for them to grow past this in the next four years and be even a str stronger unit. I think they're going to they're gonna remember this moment, of course, because as, as we've all kind of said, you're competitive. You don't ever want to lose any games. And so, of course, there's like a mixed emotion of, of feeling like you accomplished something, but not in the way that you yeah. wanted to. They could have set history by winning this game in Costa Rica. They didn't do that. There's going to be a little solemn period, okay. But when they get back in that dressing room and the conversation circles back to the bigger picture, and you realize we just did what we couldn't do the last cycle. Of course, they're going to be excited. Of course, they're going to want they're going to want to go out there and, and, and accomplish something again. Now, there's another challenge now. Can they go further than any other U.S. team has gone in a World Cup? And for this young group of players, that reaction, I don't mind it because that's sure that they, they have that hunger, that desire. I got a question for you because early in the game, I was uh -oh. saying that in, with this B squad, <laughs> would a victory cheapen the moment? Now, what do you think about because – Objectively speaking, we had a stronger lineup than, than Costa Rica, but they outplayed us today. So how do you feel about our starters competing? Because to be honest, their home form and their away form this whole cycle has been Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Well, there's, there's two things, and I don't want to make excuses, but when you put out a, a team that's well rotated in this Costa Rican side, that's fresh legs. They're playing at home. They're young players who are motivated to go out there and show well. You're talking about a lot only about, had one cap though. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to so make excuses, but well, right, here, here's the I'm list. Gonna, though. I'm going to paint, paint the reality. I'm going to paint the reality. These are young players who have a they have a point to prove. They have a chip on their shoulder. They're playing against the U.S. They we have young players special. as well yeah. with a point to prove. These are, but they have more experienced players as well. I'm talking about the U.S. Yep. Now, these, these players that the U.S. have played today also have logged quite a few minutes. At the end of the day, the bigger picture was getting back to the World Cup. You remember how you know how hard it is to play when you're on the first team and you got to play against a B team or you have got to play against the younger players. They come out there buzzing. You yeah. lose a little bit of. You know how it's a weird game. game. It's, a, it's a funny game. They got it's it, a but, trap game in some ways. I, it was for sure a trap game, but it was did almost they, on your a question platter was, your for question them was, to make history. Your question was, did they take away from the moment? Tonight. Your question was, did they take away from the moment? It doesn't. No, no, I didn't ask if it take away from. I said, what do you think now? Because this was tailor made for them to make history in Costa Rica. What I think is that we came into World Cup qualifying. And our objective was to qualify. We knew, we all know, we've been through qualifying. We know it's like this. 
there's highs, there's lows. And whether those highs or lows fall at the end of the cycle, at the beginning of the cycle, you're going to go through it. You're going to grow Throughout as the a, whole cycle. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> can I just say Gooch? something? Gooch. Why do you look so tall? What's going on? Go back to that. I am tall, man. No, no, no. Hey. Go back to the two shot, please. Oh. What's going on? Hey, now stand up. Who's tall? <laughs> six, seven. How tall are you? Six, six seven. Six, seven. <laughs> six, four. What are you, six, one? 511. Yeah, right, 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 they got him in a high chair, boy. <laughs> <laughs> See what you're doing there. Sorry to interrupt you. Well, I lost my train of thought now, so thanks. Well, do you know what I am interested in? Greg Berhalter. Where do our thoughts fall after this qualifying window? He got the job done. We were questioning him early on. There was, do we hit the panic button, don't we? What I like about him is that he was brave in terms of the lineups that he picked out, and he went for it. We just fell short of not going out on a great note. We got the job done. We qualified. But if we win that game one nothing or 2 nothing or whatever, I'm in a better mood wanting to celebrate more. It's just kind of hard for me when you didn't really play your best. You want to be trending in the right direction. I'm still excited about us being in the World Cup and trying to do something special. But, you know, you got to give him credit. He got the, jo he got the job done, but do you think it's a bittersweet day for me. In terms of the qualifying tables, Canada, Mexico, U.S., that kind of – indicates the strength of the national teams or just no, how we end? No, because I think we're better than Mexico. And at the end of the day, if Greg Berhalter doesn't go to Azteca and play that first choice well, lineup thanks. and go for the win today, we well, aren't going to position. We're, we're going. We're going to the qualifier. But on what evidence are you better for the Mexico if the table doesn't reflect that and the results in qualifying don't reflect that as an, an amalgamated score? Well, we, we absolutely dominated Mexico since, since Nations League. Okay. So if you're looking at qualifying... And four we points them, from the two games. We beat them 2-0 at home, and we drew 0-0. zero. They only got one point from the in two Azteca, games. In Azteca, okay. right? So when you're looking at it head-to-head, -head, we're a better side than Mexico. And I think we are a better side than Mexico. I think we have more quality than them. They, they aren't playing too well. And I think for us, this is, it's about figuring out ways to just become a little bit more effective in the final third. You, we, we had those key moments, and we didn't score the goals. But... Our, our key moments came more often than, than it did for Mexico. I, I just love to see, <clears throat> we saw the guys who were playing in the game and saw their reactions. I'd love to see what a guy like Weston McKinney or a guy like Sergino Des, who's at home, doesn't get a chance to influence these games, what their reaction is like. I'm sure they'll be excited. Oh, sure for be sure. Crazy because for sure. That was the objective. The objective was to get back to a World Cup. That's everybody's dream. Of course. And yeah. so that's... We of course, I feel. Way. Of course, I'm like, oh, I would have loved to. Oh, had too much stage. champagne before he came on stage. That's why. No, I feel you, bro. I feel what you're saying, bro. You know what I'm saying? I feel you, bro. On the way, son. You know, we, we need. We need to. We need to celebrate it. And there's still work to be done, right? I'm not saying, so saying that. So these players, when they come back to their teams, the players that are playing in Europe, they need to make sure they hit the ground running, that they start well in August, that they stay fit, the team gets as strong as they possibly can get. Also with the MLS players, and then. Go and try to do something special in the World Cup. I got a question off of that about going back to their club teams, staying fit, Coach having. Loves good. to take my role. I'm I, sorry. I might as well not be here. Go ahead. You know, Ask your right. question. He, when Clint talks, I just get inspired. You get inspired. Get inspired. Huh? <laughs> no, but Zach Steffen. You know, every other game he 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 gives away a little bit of uncertainty. Now him, he's going back to Man City. Do you think he needs to go on loan somewhere for the rest for in, until World Cup? Or what, that that's always, not going to happen. That was always his plan, was to go back to City and then in the summer make a loan move for the year because he knows he's got to be playing. He doesn't want to just sit at City. He signed an extension with Manchester City, but he knows I have to be playing, mm -hmm. and especially in a World Cup year. Come July, I have to make a move to get more minutes so that when the World Cup does come, I feel fit and I have those games under my belt. If he doesn't make that move, can he still be the number one? Yes, because he's still the number one now. Matt Turner, he's going to be in the same situation. He goes to Arsenal in the summer. Is he, is he just going to sit there? Do you go on loan? I think when so you what about to, Horvath? he's probably going to sit there. And Horvath, I mean, he just started playing again. But Greg Berhalter has already, we've already seen it, that Zach Steffen is his number one. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And should we take a look at, have we seen the final table, by the way? Just to remind people and recap of how this then did end up. So Canada, Mexico, USA all qualify by automatic rights. Costa Rica will go to that playoff game against New Zealand in June to see whether they can get that final remaining spot and make it all the way through to the World Cup. You guys, oh, a quick tweet from USA Soccer. Let's take a look. Qualified. Are you in there? 
I thought you might be in there as well, some legends. No, currents. Okay. Um, from FIFA, another tweet. The Stars and Stripes are back at the World Cup. You see the exclamation? Yeah, Christian Pulisic won't like that picture. Oh, <laughs> oh, he might, he might tweet them. Look at Kate. Oh, wow. <laughs> shade. Oh, the shade is the real. No, there's no shade. shade there's real. no shade. <laughs> oh, whatever. Uh, listen, CBS goes all out by you old Cristal. And you guys don't even take a sip. There's no celebration. There's no tears. Practice what you preach. I don't drink. Neither do I. Oh, okay. Mo can have it for everybody. Oh, so you want me to be the alcoholic on stage? <laughs> What's wrong with you? We know Mojo. Look at him. We're trying to set a, a good example for the kids at home. It's all about the You're kids. You're all about the kids at home huh? today, Clint. I'm about the kids, about the kids. <laughs> Clint love the kids. <laughs> I love the kids. All right, listen, uh, we're going to go to a very quick break. There are fans uh, all around America who are enjoying this moment and hopefully will say cheers with us as well very shortly. Uh, we will be right back after a very short break to continue to break this down. Don't move. It's been 1,632 days since October 10th, 2017. It's a night a lot of us wish we could forget, but no, we never will. But ever since then, there's been one thing we've looked forward to. One thought that kept us going. Today. Today, a new generation has picked up the baton. We needed hope, we needed belief. They made us proud, they made the country proud. They inspired the nation. And shown us how to look forward. The US is going back to the FIFA World Cup. See you in November. Timmy Howard, what's up? Uh, welcome along to our studio one more time in New York. Kate Abdo, Gucci Onye, Wumo Adu, Clint Dempsey, uh, Charlie Davies. Um, you know, the, the talk there was obviously about the loss in Trinidad and Tobago and, and what that took away from the players who were involved, also what it took away from the U.S. soccer community, right, who support this team. But it was also about what has now been restored, which I think is hope, Clint. No, for sure, because you saw after we didn't call for the qualify for the last World Cup, there wasn't as many people going to the games. There wasn't much excitement about the, the game in the States. And now this helps grow the game. It gets people believing again, gets people more involved in it and, and wanting to play it and get inspired. And I'm just excited about what it's going to do for the future as we look to this World Cup, but also 2026. So I'm proud of the boys for getting the job done, especially since a lot of them didn't have a lot of CONCACAF World Cup qualifying experience. They were able to, to go there and, and, and achieve the goal. So I'm happy in that regard. I just, we, got, we can't be satisfied. We've got to keep going forward. We've got to get better and make sure we do something special in the World Cup. Speaking of that, one of the things I've heard from you guys consistently throughout the qualifying window is just the difficulty of going away and playing these CONCACAF away games, right? Now going to Qatar and, and facing what will hopefully be better, more consistent conditions, can we expect more consistent performances from this current U.S. men's national team? I mean, that's the hope. The hope is, more importantly, that, and this is why I, I kind of temper um, being as, as deflated as some of you guys were with that, you know, because... I look at it from the bigger picture, that it wasn't just about today. Although today played a massive part in whether or not they qualified, it was about 14 matches. 14 matches through qualifying. And, and now they have 14 matches that provide them with different moments to learn from. Some that were great. Some you have the moments like getting the victories against Mexico, going on the road against Mexico, having strong performances. But then also games like this today, you look back at the, the other road games where you lose against Panama. Those are all lessons, all moments that they can learn from and be better prepared so that when they go to a World Cup, how do they face adversity? How do they, how do they handle that? How do they respond going down a goal? How do they go, respond going down a goal when, when a team bunkers in? How do they respond when they're up against a fan base that is not kind of turned against them? So for a young group of players, it was about the process, about the journey, about being better prepared to, to go to a World Cup 
and now showcase yourself in the best light and be successful. Uh, how much of a miss was Weston McKenney in this window? I think he was a huge miss. I think he was the best player in the last World Cup qualifying window for us. He's something he bring, someone who brings great energy. He's confident, wants to get on the ball, take people on, make things happen, breaks up plays. Um, he just makes that midfielder that much stronger. That's the engine room of this team. And, you know, when you have Musa, McKinney, and Adams in there, that's a tough midfield to, to break down. And they have to be at their best as we attack with the outside backs, and sometimes they have to cover for them in different positions. So I think he's a huge loss for us. I think Weston is a player that's hard to replace. But even saying that, I think they played exceptionally well in Mexico and against Panama without him. Every game except this last one uh, against Costa Rica – you know, they, they were able to handle that, that loss of him. So, but he's going to be back, obviously, in a, in, a, in a little bit. And hopefully he hasn't lost his form with it. But Wesson is a, a, a very critical point to this U.S. squad and, more specifically, U.S. midfield. When he's in the midfield, he just takes the, the whole team up a ho another level. Just because he's box to box, he covers so much ground, and on set pieces, set pieces. What, a, what, a, what a weapon he is on set pieces. And so you throw him in, and then you also throw in Serginho Dest. I would have loved to see him in this window because now he's getting consistent minutes with Barcelona. He's earned the manager Xavi's trust. I feel like he's developed as a two-way right back. In a match against, against Costa Rica, especially tonight, this would be made for him, where they're going to drop or they're going to throw numbers forward, and now he can get, get forward and, and be creative and give you a different dynamic in the attack. I, I look at... Two guys, especially Tyler, I always say is, is the heartbeat of this team. And then Weston, I say, is like the soul of this team. Because as you were saying, he brings a different a, a bounce to this team. He plays a game with a little bit of swagger that I think his teammates feed off of. Mm. But I think we know that going through qualifying, you're never going to – it's very rare that you have your best team available every single game. And Greg Berhalter, that's something that he said that he picked up from Bruce, that he took on board from Bruce was that you've got to be prepared with a squad. It's not just about 11, 12, 13 guys. You've got to be prepared with the squad. And I give credit to a lot of these guys. They took their opportunities when the moments came for them. When Christian was out with an injury or when Gio was out with an injury, others, other players stepped up. Other players stepped, stepped up. up. Yep. And that's – you know, we all know that when you go to a World Cup, you need that. You need, need that depth. squad depth. You look at a guy like DeAndre Yedlin, right? He goes to the World Cup in 2014. He wasn't a starter, but when his moment came, he took it. He stepped up. He stepped up in the biggest moments. And so they well in those knockout games, got him his move to, to Spurs. There you go. So now if this hurdle is cleared, right, which was the main one we had to get past initially, now you look ahead to the World Cup. What is the, what is the mark that these guys would have to hit for you to say, I'm really proud of that performance? What would make you proud for them to achieve at the World Cup? I think at first we have to see the draw, yeah. right? We have to we yep. have to wait for the draw. Um, who's going to be in it will really dictate how they want to prepare with the games that they prepare. You for. saying that means to me that there is a scenario where you'll say, I don't think they can get past the round. Well, 16. look, look, look. Is that right? No, ma no matter in, what in, the situation in, in, in is, you, you, you got to try to get out of the group and get to the knockout in two, stage. In 2014, and they were anything can happen in a from group there. of death, but they got out. They had a really difficult uh, group. But you guys had experience, you had youth, you had all that, those kind of elements. But, but crazy guys. things happened. We lost, lost Josie early on. Correct. I had to change people in different positions. I was playing more of a target, target striker, which I'm not. I'm more of a withdrawn forward, and you just have to adapt. I would love to see this U.S. team play and compete and without the tag of they're so young, right? Because I don't really care about their age anymore because they're performing everywhere else at their club level. But you all can't take away that context. No, no, I'm not, it's not taking it away, but it's almost sometimes a a crutch for them as well, giving them like an excuse because when as for me, I'm like, if you're good enough, if you're young enough, you're, if you're good enough, you're young enough or whatever. The, the if you're good enough, you're good enough. If you're good enough, you're Don't good enough. Don't matter your age. There is no age to it, right? So I think they've proven, Christian's proven it, Weston's proven it, Brendan Aronson's proven it. The number of these players have proven that despite their age, they can compete against the best in the world. So for me, it's like, take, take off their, the youngest, whatever, because we all know that. That's, that's a fact that we know. Oh, hold I, that. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I was just going to say, I think the context, I agree, and we were kind of talking about that off camera a little bit, but I think the context is a little bit different just because there's so many young guys that are all in one team. Like, if you look back to when, when you guys were breaking onto the scene, right, and Bees and Landon in that 0-2 tournament, I think back to, it was different because it was just a few young guys, really, really young guys, sprinkled into a team that had experience. This is a group of, I mean, what, pretty much the whole team minus – DeAndre and who else off the top of my head who have actually played in the World Cup. And so they're going to have to learn and take on that experience all in the same moment. And that's the only reason why I think that 
Although I agree with you, I want to keep challenging this team because I think they have potential to do something special. The contest, it exists because it is real. Clint, I got something for you. What you got? A tweet from the sound. Let's take a look. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know about that one. No, you don't like it? <laughs> nah, it's you, good. Do you want to re good. Me reply, and my, tell me him, take me it down? My, me and my American Eagle just no, chilling. No, no, with that. no with all due respect, with maybe you don't like the picture. I don't know. So the suit is dope. Don't even hate on the blazer, girl. <laughs> you stop using the word hate. When have I hated on you? Uh, let's take you out to Costa Rica. Jenny Chu is live with Greg Berhalter. Hear me anyway. <laughs> I learned that lesson. <laughs> Coach Burhalter, congratulations. You guys are headed to a World Cup. Initial emotions. It's amazing. It's amazing what this group of guys have been able to do over these last seven months and um, really seeing the team grow. And this is a great accomplishment, and we're looking forward to the World Cup. Talk about that maturation that you've seen in this group and this growth. It's hard to describe, really, how, um, how quickly the group learned what these games are about, what, what, what qualifying in CONCACAF really is. And then the next man up mentality. The guys didn't skip a beat. You know, whoever's available just came in and did their jobs. And, and it's a really special thing. It's a good group of guys. You have been at a World Cup as a player. You are now going as a coach. Talk about that emotion of getting to flip that script a bit. I don't think that's sunk in yet. Um, you know, just being at the World Cup as a player is one of the most special things you can do. You think about the, the the, the world stage and, and the games and the impact the games have and how the nation's behind you, it's really a beautiful thing. And now to be doing it as a, as a coach with this group of players is something special. What was that locker room conversation like? I see the players coming out with goggles on. I'm assuming there was some, some fun activity in there. Absolutely. I mean, it, it was a full-on party. Uh, these guys earned it. They deserve it. And, um, you know, although we're disappointed with the result tonight, we can still put it past us because we're in the World Cup. You are in the World Cup. What do these next eight months look like for you guys? Planning. Um, we'll find out Friday who we play, and then it's about preparing, uh, getting the group ready, planning our opponents, and, um, and getting ready to, to compete well in the World Cup. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jenny. Why do you guys celebrate with goggles? What's that about? You get champagne. Champagne, oh, champagne showers. Oh. So you put goggles on? I got big eyes. I got to protect that boy. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I got to do it like that. Um, what are your thoughts on Greg Berhalter's demeanor there? He, he feels a bit more upbeat kind of in general, which maybe he should be. This has been a long, draining, tiring window for them in terms of qualifying, right? Is, is his demeanor the right one? I mean, I'd be upbeat if I was able to get the job done of getting the team qualified for the World Cup, uh, especially with – how that first game so started. Was, was the job done simply let's qualify or was it let's dominate this qualifying window? Let's prove that we're the best team in CONCACAF. I mean, in an ideal world, that's, that's the plan. You always want to strive for the best, dominate, be the most dominant team. But then the main goal is make sure you qualify for the World Cup because we missed the last World Cup, right? So then it's making your adjustments, what you talked about. See what the draw is. See what games you're going to schedule to prepare you for this World Cup. Making sure you get out of your group, get to the knockout stages, and try to do something special. So, you know, he's gotten that part of the job done, but there's still a lot to work to be had in these next eight months. Uh, we've had a tweet from U.S. Soccer as well. Let's pull that one up and, and see how they are celebrating. See, hey. now, this is weird to me, right? Imagine if, like, Formula One, everybody's on the podium and, and everyone was like, whoa, 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 let me put my goggles on first. They'd be smart. This, <laughs> this is str Seriously, you guys always put goggles on before you spray the champagne? No, yeah. we, we, we didn't, didn't do two, 2000, no. 2009. Uh, they, they didn't give us uh, goggles back then, but yeah. times have <laughs> changed. The budget was different. Yeah, <laughs> budget, yeah, budget, budget cuts back in the day. Budget was different. <laughs> uh, Jenny Chu has more people with her out there in Costa Rica. She's with Tim Ware and DeAndre Yetlin. Let's listen. More people wanted to come and celebrate with us. Guys, you're going to the World Cup. Oh, the goggles. What does it feel like? It's amazing, man. I mean, obviously it's not the way we want to end the night, but it's, it's about the journey. And this obviously was a small step, a little slip up in the journey. But at the end of the day, we achieved what we wanted to achieve, and that's to qualify for the World Cup. So I'm just so happy for this whole group, for the Federation, for the country. Um, you know, I spoke to the guys before the game and I said, I just thank them for giving me a chance to, to redeem myself and giving the country a chance to redeem itself and giving the Federation a chance to redeem itself because obviously we slipped up four years ago and now we're at a point where, you know, we've qualified for the World Cup and, it, and it's all up from here. Tim, you're going to a World Cup. Yeah, uh, it's the greatest feeling. Uh, been working my whole life for this moment. 
I think sometimes, uh, you know, we slipped up tonight, but sometimes we have to realize that we're still, we're still learning, we're all still young, and, uh, you know, things like this can happen, but at the end of the day, we put ourselves in the position to, to be able to, you know, qualify. And uh, I, I'm speechless. I'm happy. I'm, I'm gonna call my mom. I'm gonna show my mom screaming right now. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I'm just speechless. Yeah, I'm happy. DeAndre, who's your first call? My first call, uh, probably be my, probably my grandparents. Probably my grandparents. Um, you know, I actually I don't know. I mean, my whole family. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call everybody all at once, man. They supported me from the, from the get go. So, uh, it'd be my whole family. Get them all on a, on a group Facetime. Uh, actually, hold on, hold on. It'd be my daughter. Sorry. It'd be my daughter. <laughs> DeAndre, you're the one player who has already been to a World Cup. What was your message to the team after this match? Now you guys are going to another one. Uh, just to embrace this moment, man. It's uh, Again, it's not, it's not the exact result that we wanted, but like I said before, it's about the journey, and it's about... It's about the fact that we set out for a goal and we achieved it tonight. Um, and now this doesn't stop. You know what I'm saying? We got we got dreams and aspirations for the, for the World Cup. So we're gonna start preparations. I'm sure tomorrow. I'm sure the staff will start preparations tomorrow. I know the draw is coming up, so we'll know our opponents. And um, man, we just we're so excited. I'm so excited for this group. Tim, a message to the U.S. fans that have been supporting this entire qualifying. Uh, just thank you. We love you guys. Um, we couldn't have done it without you guys. You guys have been a force um, through thick and thin, through all the trials and tribulations that we've had as a group. You guys have been there supporting us and backing us. And, you know, there's, there's no better way to thank you than, than to qualify for a World Cup and to continue, uh, you know, building on this, uh, on this, this process. And uh, I'm just so happy that we can share this moment with you guys. And I love you. <laughs> Thank you guys. Continue to celebrate. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Turn up back home. Yeah. Thanks very much, Jenny. Um, DeAndre has no idea who he wants to call first. Does he? <laughs> He's lost. Um, any thoughts? Um, um, I, it still strikes me that there's a real difference in, in energy between this room and what's happening over there. Listen, they're, they're, they're happy. I mean... It, as he said, this is their first. So oh, are we not happy? Oh, no, I'm happy. No, no, no. Don't speak for me. Can happy. I just speak? But, but I thing, speak without your coat? No, nah, I feel you because, like, look, we we qualified against Mexico in Columbus. We won two nothing. We're celebrating in the locker room, but I'm not. I missed my. I missed the penalty in that game. And even though I'm happy for the team, and I wish I'd enjoyed the moment more, I'm thinking, man, I should have capitalized there. And mm -hmm. it's it's hard to fake how you feel. People just have certain feelings. So even though that. We were happy that we qualified. You still expect more of yourself. Well, so what, at what moment did it settle in for you and your, your emotions changed and you were able to actually appreciate what the bigger picture was? It's the vibe of, of being around the guys and seeing how happy they are and then, and then calling your people at home and, and the people that have supported you. Who'd you, you. call first? <laughs> Man, I called my mom. <laughs> called my dad for sure because, I mean, they used to drive me three hours one way and three hours back so I could train. So I had to hit them God up. bless him. Uh, you know, we do have footage from the last time that, that the U.S. did qualify from the game that you're talking about, Clint. This is it. Talk us through what you remember. A great header from Eddie Johnson, rising above everybody, playing with that passion. Got a little touch on this to, to land him. Great goal there. And then me trying to hit it hard and, uh, to the side and missing it. And even though we're happy that we qualified, I just remember feeling how I felt kind of tonight. Just I'm happy that we did it, happy that – we're going to be going to the World Cups, what you dream about as a kid, but I expected more of myself to get the goal there, and I'm sure that some of the guys, they might feel that. They expected more of themselves. Some people said you missed it on purpose to keep it thus a set. Well, they don't know me then. Hey, let them know. You know what I'm saying? That's the only penalty I missed for the U.S. team. And if I'm in front of goal, that might have been the one goal that kept me from being the, the solidified to me as the, the leader away from, from landing because we're tied on goals. Mm. We're going to go back out to Costa Rica one more time. Jenny Chu has Gio Reyna with her. Gio, you're going to the World Cup. Initial feelings there? Uh, yeah, despite the result, it's a, it's a great feeling. We're all so happy. We're all uh, celebrating inside. Uh, yeah, we're going to enjoy it for the next few hours. And then, uh, yeah, now we just have to look forward. And, yeah, we're looking forward to the World Cup. I think you deserve a little more than a few hours to celebrate that. What was that conversation like in the locker room? I mean, it definitely wasn't a conversation. It was a lot of yelling and popping champagne, but uh, no, nah, it's great. We're all so happy. It's obviously after the last World Cup was tough for some guys. So, yeah, everyone's just, just so happy. We had our eyes on this for, for a long time, so it's, it's great that we achieved this finally. You know, my understanding is that this will not be your first World Cup. Your mom was pregnant with you when your father, Claudio Reyna, played in a World Cup. Is that true? Yeah, I think in the 2002 one, I was, I was in her belly, so... Um, 
2006 I was there. So, yeah, it's definitely not going to be the last. So I'm looking forward to, to all of them. There's a rumor that you cut your hair to look like Clint Dempsey. Uh, <laughs> that one kind of caught me off guard. Uh, I was, just, yeah, I mean, it's not a, it's definitely not a bad person to be compared to at all. So, uh, wasn't what I'm going for, but now that you said it, I'll say, yeah, it's true. I'm, I was going for the Clint Dempsey look. Message to your family, the fans out there, qualified for the World Cup. See you in Qatar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Jenny, thanks a bunch. Um, he's a special player, and one I think we're all looking forward to, to seeing what he can do for the U.S. on the pitch in Qatar. Yeah, Gio is, is special. I mean, he's he's busted on this scene in the last year. You know, he's he's done phenomenal in Germany with Dortmund. He's come to the U.S. national. I remember his first couple of caps with. He played with authority, with confidence, as if he'd been there for the last four years. And we saw the difference that he makes in these last three games just coming off the bench and, and, and how he changes the whole style of play offensively for the team. So as he said, this is not going to be his last one. I think the future, as Clint says, is, is, is very bright for Gio uh, and with the national team as well. I just, I'm just excited to see Gio. I'm excited to see all these players because – you know, the World Cup is that platform. It's that stage. It's the best of the best international football. And so to see these guys, we've seen them in CONCACAF. We've seen them with their club teams. But now to see them potentially playing against the likes of Messi and those guys and going head-to-head -head and seeing how they compare, that's, that's, the, that's what you dream of as a kid. If, if you, Because you're talking about how inexperienced this group is, right? If you haven't been to a World Cup, what don't you know? What aren't you ready for? What's going to hit you? It's just the stage, right? Like being in the stadiums playing against the best players in the world. I mean, I know you do that with, in the club level week in and week out, but it's like you represent your country, your country's behind you. You know how much you wanted as a kid to play in the World Cup. I mean, that's all I dreamed about as a kid. It wasn't to go pro. It wasn't to make money. It was I want to play in the World Cup, and I want to score in the World Cup and help my country do something great. So you, you, you feel those emotions, and, and when you step out on that pitch, it's just being able to, like, to, to, to feed off of that in, in a good way, don't let the moment be too big for you. Control what you can control and go out there and leave it there and make sure you leave your mark on the World Cup. And, you know, I like to think I left my mark on every World Cup I played in. So hopefully these boys will be able to do the same. Amen. Yeah. Um, uh, well, you know what? Uh, job done, right? Business handled in terms of the U.S. qualifying for the World Cup. But there is more business still to be handled this evening. That's right. Micah Richards has flown all the way from the United Kingdom to take on Oguchi <laughs> on Yewu. We will be right back. Don't move. Welcome back. Well, Twitter is a busy place tonight after the U.S. men's national team have qualified for Qatar. Matt Turner, U.S. keeper, has tweeted this. I remember where I was when we failed to qualify for 2018. I couldn't fathom that as a fan, and I sure as hell didn't think that I would have anything to do with getting our country back to the World Cup. What a journey it has been. Thanks for sticking with us through thick and thin. He says, uh, we've got more tweets to show you as well. Freddie, hey, do. Hey, hey. What's up, Freddie? He said, congratulations to the U.S. men's national team for qualifying for the World Cup. Clap, clap, clap. USA. And another one. What else have we got? Demarcus Beasley. Oh. oh. Good evening. He says, wait, the champagne's gone? Oh, Let me guess. Bees. Mo and Charlie. Oh, okay. Me and Charlie got, we got a, I got, got something for Bees. Yeah. Hey, Bees. Keep our, our names out your funny mouth! <laughs> 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 hey, oh no, joke, what's it's this joke. Joke. <laughs> Keep our <laughs> names out <laughs> your funny <laughs> mouth! Uh, Too okay. early? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what else have we got for, for this segment? We're going to talk about your all CONCACAF selected team. Okay. Uh, by the, you guys picked this, apparently. This is your votes. And a couple of other people. I think Jenny Chu's, uh, Dre Cordero, your vote was in here as well. Best 11. Thoughts. Kayla Navas gets the nod in goal. Oh, no. I, I don't know how Montez got in there. Because <laughs> 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 none of us put none Montez us in our team. I can tell you that, right? I like, I that like midfield. the midfield. I like the midfield. midfield. Solid. Yeah, midfield's nice. Solid midfield. Ooh, that's yeah. a dangerous front line. How do you compete with that front three? That's, oh, a, that's, that's tough right there. Uh, Montez snuck in there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be a glitch. That's a that was, glitch. That was Jenny. That was all Jenny. <laughs> that, that's oh, a glitch. I mean, I would have had like a Canadian defender. Alistair Johnson's got to yeah. be on Johnson, there. Johnson, Kamal Miller, Miller, one of the Paul two Miller's of them. got to be there. Navas showed his class today. I mean, he kept them in the game, a couple big saves. Mm -hmm. 
the rest of it kind of picks itself. Okay, no other arguments? Go ahead. Um, uh, striker position, is that still an issue for, for the U.S.? Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. There's no one who's just taken that with, with both hands and said it's me. There was a moment where it looked like it was kind of trending in a direction for... In the Ricardo Pepe direction? And then it's just kind of cooled off. Doesn't mean you can't get back on that wave, but no one has solidified that position, and that is a position we need to have people who are scoring on a regular basis. So if you had to pick it now, first game at the World Cup, you have to pick it now. Mm. First game at the World Cup, who gets the nod in that role? If I'm going to be real with you, I don't even know. Playing. It depends who we're playing. That's how, that's how I would... I would, uh, uh, that, that would kind of be able to direct me in who, who I'm going to go with. Well, why does it depend who you're playing? Because if this is a team where you've got to chase the ball, you're not going to get on it, then I probably want a player who can check back and get, get on the ball, which would be Jesus Ferrer. If they're a team that's playing a high line, I want Ricardo Pepe. And P-Folk, he's just he's dropped too far below after the Mexico performance for me. I, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if... There's another striker. I think you're too hard on him on that. I, I just, I, I feel like they're too hard. On PFAC. On PFAC. I, I think, think there's another striker that could emerge in the next six months. All right, listen, we're going to go out to Costa Rica again. Jenny Chu is with Tyler Adams. Here we go. Tyler, you are said to be the heartbeat of this team, and you guys are now going to the World Cup. What's that like? Uh, undescribable undescribable feeling um, you know for me growing up for the team growing up you know we've watched World Cups um, and now we're gonna be able to say we're gonna be able to play in one and I think that you know throughout this process throughout this journey um, we've learned a lot about ourselves as a team um, but the end goal was always to accomplish and, and uh, qualify for a World Cup so we're excited for it talk about this team that you're you're mentioning you know you guys have grown so much throughout this process as a leader on this team what have you seen from them a maturity throughout this process. Um, we've grown and developed a lot, not only as players, but also as people. We've created a chemistry within the team that, you know, we're, we're excited to come into camp. Um, it's a great environment to be in. And it's not just the players, it's the backroom staff that do all the work and work with us every day to prepare us for these games. So, um, you know, these are guys that I grew up playing in the youth national team with. Uh, and the guys that weren't a part of that, I watched on TV, like DeAndre and Kellen Acosta, guys that were role models for me when I was coming into the league. So um, to celebrate this moment together is really special. As a leader on this team, do you have a message to the U.S. fans that have been supporting this entire time? Yeah, I mean, without the fans, we, we would really be nothing. Um, you know, the expectations were high, obviously, coming into qualifying because we uh, didn't qualify for the last World Cup. And, uh, you know, now to qualify for the World Cup, it's for every fan that supported us throughout this, this journey, the ones that travel to away games to support us, the home support to, to give us the points that we needed. Yeah, it's amazing. They've been amazing throughout this whole journey. Congratulations, Tyler. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy this. Enjoy yeah, this. Thank you so much, guys. Yes, 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 congratulations. Don't go, Jenny, Miss Mexico, because I believe you got given a T-shirt. And we would like to see you celebrate this moment for the U.S. men's national team. Mm -hmm. Mexican fan that you are. <laughs> Let's see you in this T-shirt. I got it, I got it. I'm also a U.S. fan, okay? I'm also a U.S. fan. Can we, can we get Ivis in the okay, shot so. as well? Ivis is a big part of <laughs> <laughs> he doing. Teamwork hey, makes the dream awesome. work. What awesome. kicks does he get on? Yeah, what kicks? What, All right, what does go. Ivis get on his feet? Can, wow. can we see what Ivis has got on his feet, Jenny? Oh, yeah. Ivis is known can for you, the kicks. Can you show his? Has he gone big? Oh. oh <laughs> he's so dunks. excited about this. He's okay. been talking about them all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, you, think, you wear it so approve? well. He's I been approve. looking for your approval. Yeah, tell him two thumbs up. He approves. And we approve of you in the T-shirt. Thank you for all your work. We appreciate you traveling all over the place so that we don't always have to. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Good to thank see you. you. Take thank care. Thank you, guys. Enjoy I appreciate yourself. it. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we're going to go to a break. That's what we're going to do. The arm wrestle is still coming, everybody. In fact, am I, is it the next segment? It's not the next segment, but stay with us. Don't move. It's coming very, very quickly. We'll be right back in a moment. Let's go, Gooch! <laughs> Let's go! Oh, oh. All right, very warm welcome back. So the U.S. are through to the World Cup. They will be in Qatar. Uh, there's a bunch of other teams who have also booked their place over either today or yesterday. Mexico is one of the teams that is also going to the World Cup uh, in is it November, December uh, 2022, of course, this year in Qatar. Here's some of the highlights from the game between uh, Mexico and El Salvador tonight. Let's take a look. 
Has anybody seen this game yet? No, probably not, well, right? you know, Tata decided to finally change and play some different players, and he gets rewarded with it. Oriol Antuna comes into the game, makes his impact known. He's a player, a young attacking player that a lot of Mexican fans have been dying to see play for this Tata Martino side, and he hasn't featured much. Makes the most of his opportunity. Then gets the foul. goal, and then he also draws a penalty kick. And I've, I've been saying, he needs to be given a chance. He, he gives you a different dynamic. He's pacey, he's quick. And Raul Jimenez, Jimenez with the golazo. And Mexico, a shutout and two goals? Okay. <laughs> uh, this one from yesterday, Portugal against North Macedonia. Portugal going through. Yeah, great ball from Cristiano Ronaldo. Bruno Fernandes, great finish to get them to a 1-0 lead. This is an even better finish. I mean, Woo. just off the half volley, the timing of the run, precision of the pass, but then to have the quality and the composure. He's been doing this for Manchester United. Now he does it for the national team as well. Poland, Sweden also played yesterday. This one in Poland. No surprise here. It's, uh, oh, PK and Lewandowski. If you give him this chance, look at that nice little stutter before the pen. The key, got the keeper committed and pulling up 1-0. They'd make it too. And it's Ilinski does well. Just good timing of reading the play, stays with it, and then having the composure to book their ticket. At Senegal, Egypt, controversy in this one, everybody. Just so much drama. I mean, they thought that they scored a goal. All right, they actually did score a goal. And this is the goal that now will send this game eventually to penalty kicks where some of that drama happens. You see that? This is the laser wrong. light show. This is so yeah. wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. I don't but know. what are you going to do to stop that, right? I mean, that's Which? intense, so that's aggressive. <laughs> that is yeah. aggressive. I've, ne was... I've never seen it that I've, much I've in my never... life. <laughs> Neither have I. Yeah. Another game-winning penalty for Mane to get the job done. Yes, sir. Uh, listen, amazing scenes yesterday as World Cup qualifying ended in Africa, Ghana. Uh, the World Cup nemesis of the United States got a 1-1 draw in Nigeria and advanced to the World Cup. <laughs> He's stupid on the away goals rule. Uh, there was... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to keep going. Hey, man, you got to be careful, man. Wait, oh, wait, wait, watch out for that. I was fine. Bro. I was in the moment. You saw me. Cool. Cool as a cucumber. <laughs> No problem. I would have sloughed it away. Um, I tell you what, let's talk about the draw, the pots, how this all happens, right? Because the World Cup draw is now on Friday. Uh, 32 teams in the field with three teams still yet to be decided. They will be drawn into eight groups of four teams. Um, at the draw, eight teams will then be placed in each pot, with each pot based on the FIFA World Cup, or sorry, FIFA World Rankings, I should say. Qatar, plus the top seven teams in the FIFA Rankings will be put into pot one. The subsequent parts will then be calculated in descending order of the rankings, with the three remaining playoff teams placed in pot four. The US will be in pot two. Our friends at Fox have the draw, by the way, which begins at noon Eastern oh, tomorrow. Give me, give me the pot, Qatar, U.S., Tunisia, mm. you don't want Saudi Arabia, <laughs> Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I would, I would take that. Give me that group. <laughs> Clint, what is that? Is that the best possible outcome there for the United States? Uh, shoot, I need to go back to school, figure out what the best the, the flags? is. Uh, <laughs> well, shoot, I, I'm getting kind of blurred from all these lasers that we were looking at earlier. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with what Charlie said. I mean, that would be the best case scenario to play against those teams from if you look at those four groups. What do you think would be the worst case scenario? In these to games? play against France, to play against uh, Germany, to play against Senegal, and to play against uh, Ghana, because Ghana's always been a tough game that we would go against them. So Germany, you can't get. You're in the same pot as Germany. There does have to be one European oh. team and in each see, group. See, that's why so, I didn't go back to school. So, Charlie, your group scenario doesn't work either, right? Because there has to be one European within each pot. I believe. Correct? Have I said that right? Yes. So, how, hey, why don't you tell us the group? All right, then give me Serbia. Yeah, you tell well, us you're doing it wrong. Show us the way. Show no, us the way. I'm just giving you helpful guidance. Uh, so, Charlie, you're going to get... Give me Poland, then, if I have okay. to choose. Robert Lewandowski? Really? Yeah. yeah. I'll, get, I'll take Poland. Okay. Well, well, you no, throw what, your, what, what your would be your thing? toughest group, right? The, the group toughest you don't group, want. you got France. England. England. Nobody wants any of that smoke. Oh, stop it. Oh, stop it. What? Stop it. Hey, last time we played in the World Cup, we drew them. Sure did. Say it again. Pre oh, oh, a draw. Oh, stop. 
Someone had to bang on him. Yeah, she, <laughs> she changed sides every other minute. Who, I who, what? Who are you for now? Hey, uh, I am just a neutral person uh, running a neutral show. These comments didn't sound so neutral to me. Who won that group, by the way? Which group? Well, the U.S. Hey, we got another question for you. Talk that. 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 All right. So uh, they're telling me we want from you now, Clint. Starting lineup. I, and don't please don't come with me with oh well it depends who we're playing. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Your starting lineup. Your best eleven. Essentially, the question is right for the U.S. men's national team at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, this is the team that I had to pick based on who I think's been playing the best. So I would go with Zach Stefan in the mm -hmm. back, uh, be obviously in goal. Uh, Anthony Robinson, to me, emerges one of the best left backs in CONCACAF now. Miles Robinson and Walker Zimmerman show that they've uh, been a, a good pair. Sergino Dest, when he's fit, um, get you goals and also get you assists. I like the way that he plays. We talked about Weston on set pieces, along with Tyler just being that engine room. I like what Moose has been able to do, being calm on the ball. Um, and then up top, the, the only absence here that was hard to not put in was Aronson because I feel like he had a, a, a good World Cup qualifying uh, cycle. But I have to reward Tim Weah for going at people, taking them on, and, and being hungry. Gio, we know what class that he has. We can just keep him fit. And Christian, the big man for big moments. So uh, that's, that's why I, I think that team's one of the best ones we could, we could go with. But I know that everybody's going to say Tim Weah doesn't normally play a number nine. We don't really have a number nine that solidified that position. So it's still kind of up for grabs. I just wanted to put in players who I, impressed, I who've impressed me in, the, in this in this cool. You said you love it? I, I love it because <laughs> you want your... My man. My man. Yeah. That's what I, I'm talking about. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You want your best players on, on the pitch. <laughs> Timothy Wea has emerged as, I think, a player that we need to have on the field. Even in the first half today, he showed his ability to get around in the final third, pick up different spots. I think his hold-up play has improved combining, and he's got pace. What other striker has pace in our, in, our, in our group? No one. I think for him, he gives you that different dynamic where he can stretch back lines. He can create more space underneath for Christian and Gio, and Gio Reyna because now you have your outside backs who can provide width. Tim, Timothy Weah, if a number nine doesn't develop in the next six months, I you think that's your best bet. You think that's the shout, putting them in the nine? Yes. How about this, by the way? George Weah, his father, Ballon d'Or winner, Never played in a World Cup, and now we'll get to watch his son. Oh, that's According crazy. to you, Clint, start in the first game in the World Cup. That's pretty that's nice. That's crazy stat. I mean, shoot. Circle. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but why not try stuff out? I mean, I, I, I don't mind it because you're just you're putting your best 11 out there, and that front three can interchange, and sometimes, you know, Tim Way might find himself drifting wide, and Gio floats inside and exactly. plays a little bit more narrow at times. So it's, I wouldn't mind seeing that. I, I, I would actually argue seeing if, Timothy would actually agree to play the point and be the number. Oh, you think you're going to say no? <laughs> no? No, no, no. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, I don't want to hey, start today. Hey, 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 I ain't hey, in my position. Hey, I feel hey, comfortable hey, in the World right, Cup. All right, so someone's like, hey, hey bring Clint, me on as a sub. Hey, Clint, you want to play center back? Because it's completely different. This guy's playing. No, no, I'm just. No. I'm not hey, saying, obviously, it's, it's, if it's the World Cup, extreme, if, it's if it's the World Cup, if it's the World Cup, it's the only way I can play. I'll play center back. I'll play goal. I'll play goalie. Okay, then. Whatever's going to get me on the field. All right. I don't know. I'm trying to be like Gooch. Uh, listen, we got still more to come for you uh, here on this show as we celebrate the U.S. men's national team qualifying for Qatar 2022 World Cup. Here we come. We're on our way. We'll be I back in it. just a minute. See you in a second. <laughs> Takes it all in his stride. Clint Dempsey, induction day. Mark it in your calendars. 21st of May, 2022. How many invites you get, Clint? At least four. What do you mean? 
How many people do you get to invite? Oh, um, shoot. I'm probably going to do like, I don't know, like 15, 20. Oh, really? Are we, are we in that number? No, I haven't got it yet. Well, you know, I, hey, y'all didn't get you. Maybe an Evite? Something? I don't know. Hey, I thought CBS was going to get y'all a table there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you everybody gonna... come. Read the whole crew. We have, we'll have 30 over there. You're going to have somebody write your speech? People do that, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to have my, my, probably my brother. Oh, really? Yeah, probably my brother, Ron. Do so you got jokes? Man, shoot, he probably, yeah, he probably got some jokes, got some dirt on me, but uh, he's the one that kind of, like, got us involved in the game in terms okay. of knowing about it, being able to watch other countries play and doing what we needed to do to get to a big city to play against, like, the best competition, get that, get that coach, and then knowing about, like, playing in World Cup. So kind of owe it all to him, kind of inspiring me and showing me the way. Nice. Is he watching now? He probably is. What's, What's up, up, Ryan? Ryan? Shout out to Ryan. Shout Ryan. out to Ryan. Ryan. We're excited. Oh, yeah, but you know what? Don't worry, because it's not only Clint who's been shining over this window and, oh, and nice. during this show. All of you have become internet sensations. Let's take a look. Who we got? Cl okay, Clint, first and foremost. The glasses. Predictions. Hey. Charlie with the stanky hey. leg. That was special, Charlie. Mo with the samba. <laughs> and Cl Clint with your calculator. With you. calculator, you calculator, calculator. <laughs> Keeping it classy. And you did gift one to everybody, and Clint is the only person who still brings his calculator hey, thank every you, single Goose. show. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Beep, boop, boop, boop. I still got it. You got, you got nothing before. but blank paper. I know. I like, I, <laughs> everybody at home, I act like I take notes. I, I just look at pictures. <laughs> As you can see, when we're talking about the World Cup, I got that all wrong. So <laughs> I, need, I need someone to help me. Uh, listen, we've got a couple of other guests uh, waiting in the wings. We've got Mike Grella. We've got Micah Richards. They are also in the studio. They're about to jump up onto the set. And you know what? We might just met Micah and... I don't know, fight it out for a seat. What do you mm. reckon? You know where I'm from, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know where I'm from. <laughs> we'll be right back, guys. <laughs> The massive football action just keeps on coming here on uh, CBS Sports and Paramount Plus. Uh, and with more on that, we welcome in from our Serie A show, Calcio e Cappuccino, Mike Grella. Good to see you making his New York City debut as well, coming all the way from our Champions League studio in London. Are we going to show them? <laughs> welcome into the studio, everybody. <laughs> Come on in. Big Meeks in the Big Apple. Ooh. Micah Richards, been here five minutes, gets up and complains that it smells. Oh, What's the problem? <laughs> New York, it fits me so well. Can I get a deal, CBS? Talk to me. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Um, Micah is, of course, here for the, the arm wrestle of the century, which is going to happen with Gooch in the next segment. We have been building up to it for almost an entire season now. Who's your money on? I don't know. You, you should have seen his reaction though when he first saw Gooch. This man Ooh. was shook. I'm not gonna lie, Gooch is bigger <laughs> than I thought. He's big. <laughs> I think it's 50-50. Do you? Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we're ready for it. We're excited. So talk to me about Champions League, because uh, I fly to London on Sunday, get there for next week's Champions League. We've got some interesting matches coming up. Yeah. Man City, your Man City at home against Atletico first leg of that one. Benfica against Liverpool also next week. Yeah, I think Man City will, will have too much over the two legs. Atletico, good defensively, but Man City, although they've not been at the greatest of late, I still think they'll have more than enough. Liverpool on fire, Diaz is playing well, Firmino's come back to form as well, Mane and Salah, so I think they'll both go through. You don't think that will be an easy tie against Atletico? No, I don't think easy, no, because we, we know how defensively astute Atletico can be, but in terms of the quality of Manchester City's side, I, I think they'll have too much from us. We watch Atletico against Man United, and at times, it was just giving the ball to Man United to break us down. They can't do that to Man City because they will break them down. But a good fixture, but I think Man City will have too much. Mo, your thoughts? 
I'm just curious. This is the year for Man City. Sorry, is this the year you for Man go, City? I, I've been saying for Man City for the last past three. Years. Yeah, I know. So I'm not. I got to the final last season. Uh, Chelsea, you know, have a goal. But I, I do believe with the squad. You look at the squad, strengthened for depth. You think it's got to be Man City. They've got to win it soon. I, I do think that they get through that tie. I'm um, the one that kind of. I think is probably the most level is that Real Madrid and Chelsea tie. I think that this Real Madrid team has been reinvigorated and, and the form that Benzema has been in has been incredible. Chelsea, I mean, they've been on a tear this season as well. So I think they're pretty evenly matched. And then on the other side, I think, yeah, I think Liverpool gets through and they make their way to the final on that other side. Uh, Champions League is, of course, not the only other football content that we have uh, on, Serie, on, on uh, Paramount Plus for you and CBS here. We've also got Serie A massive game, Mike, coming up at the weekend. Yeah. It, it is Juventus against Inter. Interin. This is how the table looks right now. And you guys are going to this game. So you fly out tomorrow. That's right. We fly out tomorrow. We're not going, Italy's not going to the World Cup, but it was still one of the best leagues in the world. Uh, there's seven points from fourth place to first place. Eight games left. So anyone can win in those four teams. Uh, it's that tight. And it's going to be an amazing game on Sunday, 2.45 on Sunday. How did you take that, by the way? Have Italy not going to the World Cup. Not good, to be honest. But we have four World Cups, so it's okay. I can sleep at night. Wow. 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 <laughs> Listen to this, man. He's living in, he want to live in the past so bad. <laughs> we have four World Cups, so it's okay. But no, it was a, it, it was in a little bit of embarrassment. Uh, very proud. Also, now I'm, now I'm 100%. I'm 50% Italian, 50% American. Tonight, I'm 100% American, there you go. so I'm happy we're going to the World Cup, uh, <laughs> but Italy, we do still have four World Cups. Can't forget. All right.